Hey, what's up everybody? This is Patrick from buildtolearn.io and after this brief tutorial, you will know how to use a single component across many different routes and customize that component depending on the route that you're on. And when I'm talking about customization, I mean customizing styles, content and even behavior. So hop on over to CodePen. The link is just below this video. Make sure you fork it and play along because that is the best way for you to learn. Now let's take a look at the UI so you understand what's happening here. At the very top, we have six simple links, one to a home page and the other five to individual pages. Now each link changes to a different route and each route is wired up to two named router views. Now, if you don't know what router views are, a router view is that area on the page that is affected whenever a route changes. So as a route changes, you can wire up different components to handle that routing view. And it's in that router view, that section where that component is rendered. And you can give these areas names. So that makes it easier for you to direct different components to the named view slots. So if we just open up the HTML section here, you'll see at the very bottom within the main body section, we have two router views. One is named header and the other one is named content. Now on each route change, we can take whatever component we want and plug it into that slot. So just below the navigation here, this red section, this is the content section. And if you visit page one, you'll see in the blue, that's our header section. And every time we travel from one, two, three, four, and five, the section at the top, the header section, this is what we will be changing and customizing for each route. Now the content section below, that won't be customized. That is a different component each time. It's the header that we'll be customizing. So let's take a look next at how this is all wired up. In our HTML, we have six components that are the router link components. Now this is a component that accepts props just like any other component and the router link component accepts a to property and we'll be passing in our information that way. Now the first thing that you'll see that we're passing in is a name. So a name property on the object that we're passing in. Now this name corresponds to the name of the route and if you don't know what named routes are it's simply unique names that are given to each route in the router and we can travel to that route by referencing the name. So we reference it this way. So in our link here, our router link, when I click on that, the router knows to go to the route that is named home. And in each other case, it knows to go to the route that is named one, two, three, four, and five. Now these routes are defined in the JavaScript side. So we'll go down to the very bottom of the page and you'll see we have a constant set up. It's an array of six objects and each object is a definition for a single route. The first one we have here is home. Now this is a fairly simple definition. We have our path set, we have our name set to home, which wires it up to our first router link there, which also references home. And then we have another property for components. Now this property, the components property is used when we use named router views. And so we have to say which component will go in which named view. We have our header view and our content view. And in the case of the home link, we only wire up a component to the content view. So that means that the header view is going to be ignored. It won't be rendered and that's just fine. On the other five, we define, define a component for each of them, for both the header and for the content. Now you notice on each content value, we have a different component being loaded. We have content one, two, three, four, and five. And those are all defined right up the top. They're just simple uh, templates, but their header component, this has more going on. This is the component that will receive the unique data that's being passed to each view in the form of a prop. And these props can then be used by the header component to make the changes that we want. So if we head back over to our HTML side, let's take a look at the first one and break it down a little bit. For the two prop, we're setting our name property to one. So we're going to the route one. And then we have a params object. And this is the unique data that we can set up ourselves that the header component is ready to work with. Now, if you jump over to the header component, let's take a look at the props property so that we can see which props it is ready to work with. It's ready to work with color, custom classes, which is an array, a title, which is a string, 
text, string, description, string, and an action, which is also a string. And you'll see how each one of these can be used within the, within the template that's just above here. So we'll go up to the template, and you'll see that in the header tag we reference uh, title styles and class list. Now these, you have to see, are actually computed properties based on what's being passed in with the params object. So we'll go down to our computed property here. Title styles is taking this color, so the color that's passed in through the params uh, object in our router link uh, a component right here. It's taking that color and it's just returning a, 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 an inline style referencing that color, so to change that color. So it's just color and then the color that's being passed in and that's being put in as an inline style on the H1 tag right there. Now class list, that is coming from the array of custom classes that is being put in and we're simply joining every entry in that array and just making one long string of classes and that's just being added up here it's binding to the class attribute for the h1 tag now these other ones are more obvious the text uh, the text property right there that's coming from props that's the text that we're passing in you can see that on uh, router link 3 for example text then we have description down here Okay, and then show message. Now this, uh, this is actually attached to, if we go down a little bit, uh, let me see, when an action is, uh, is initiated, so when you click on the button, it fires the do action method, and then it just simply toggles uh, show this message, show message. So that's, um, that's something that's being revealed as you click. So we go down here, for example, go to four, so we can see our button. You click that and it says you called action one. Go here, you called action two. So again, on these things you can review, uh, you can reveal different sections based on your actions, but of course you would know that. And then we can see the action property that's coming in. So the action string that's coming in on the props, if it is set, then we'll show this button. So V if action, so if it's set, then we'll reveal the button. The button, the text on the button references the string that's been passed in, but the, the string is also being used down here in the do action method right there, and the string is referencing that function on this object, okay, and it's just executing it like a function right there. So hopefully you can understand how that works. This is using the, the uh, square bracket notation to access a property on this object and then the curly braces just executes it as a function. Now let's take a look at the first router link we set up and see which props that we're customizing for this instance of the header component. So if we go to the first router link, you see on the params object we're sending up color, a title, and a description. We're not sending up anything else. So in those cases where it's needed, we'll have defaults set up. So you see we have a default for the color, so if we don't send up the color, it'll default to a pink. If we don't send up any custom classes, we'll just have an empty array. For title, we have a default title, some default for text. I'll change this to default text. Description, it's required. We should set up a default there as well, why not? Default description. Now if we didn't set up a default and it was required, then we would get an error in our console. Okay, now let's look at the second link that we've set up. We direct this link to route two, and route two for the params, we're sending up color, some custom classes this time, a title, as well as a description. So we'll see that our custom class that we're sending up is class one. Let's take a look at our CSS to see what that does. If we have our header tag with a class one, then we'll just underline the title. So let's see if that happens. We go from one, no underline under the title, we go to two, that class is being applied, and now we have our underline. We can see that we also set up a color green on the title, so that's showing up. We have a title of page two, that's there, and our description. Let's change this description to see what happens. This is our new description. And we'll go to our second route, and this is our new description. So you can see we pass it up, and that's working just fine. Now let's take a look at our third route. Here we have 
Uh, it's routed to the number three route. We are sending up color, text, and description again. See, this time the color is purple. So let's go to three. We see the color is purple. In this case, we're not sending up a title. So in that case, our default is being used, which is default title. You know, you can use these defaults as a reminder to you as well. As well. You can set a crazy color on these. Let's say the crazy color is, uh, uh, is there an orange here? And we can do a default um, title of, in all caps, you must put a title here. So you can set little reminders for yourself that way. So we'll go back to three. And right, we see we got a big capital letters that will get our attention, hopefully. Now, let's see, let's go to route four. This is where things get a little more interesting. Not only are we changing content like text and colors for styles, we can also change behavior. So. For this one, I'm actually setting an action. Now that I've set an action, our button will be displayed. So we go to four, now we have our button, and that will route to the action one method. So let's try it out. Let's open our console, because these functions should be logging something to the console, so we'll open that. We'll click action one. Action one is called, let's go to our fifth route, action two. Action two is called, and you see our new default title is there, and our default, default color to catch our attention. So that's it. I think you can see how valuable it would be to have a component that you could reuse over multiple different routes. And really when you can customize styles, content, and behavior, there's not a whole lot of limit to what you can do. I guess the only danger here is that the header component could become quite bloated, but as you're working with it, you'll be able to strike a balance between how much you put within the header component itself, and if you actually need to divide it up into further subcomponents from there. But Try not to get too crazy with that. Have fun with this. If you have any questions, please post them down below. You can contact me on Twitter if this was helpful at all. Please write a comment down below to tell me so. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. I'll be creating many tutorials just like this one. Thanks very much. See you next time.